Hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, panel discussion today on Trolls World Tour. I am here with the the kind of filmmaking creators and producers, um, Walt Dorn, the director, Gina Shea, the producer, and Kendall Cronkite, the production designer. And we are going to discuss Trolls World Tour for on behalf of Asifa Hollywood. So thank you everyone for joining us today. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having us. I love talking about this movie, so I'm ready. <laughs> oh, great. I, I, you know, I viewed the movie when it first came out. I'd like to discuss that actually to start with. The movie was a, obviously originally going to be a theatrical release and then you entered, ended up bringing it out in streaming. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, everybody to talk about it. But, you know, one thing we say, because that was, you know, right there at the beginning, you know, uh, this kind of unprecedented thing we were going through. And so what was really great is that we came at a time when <clears throat> families and people really were ready to kind of have this in their home, <laughs> you know, and the movie was is scientifically engineered to make you feel good. And so <laughs> I think we took real pride and it was a real honor to be able to share all this incredible work that everybody did at a time when people really needed a movie that made you feel good. Something super interactive too, where families could just engage in the music and sing and dance with their kids and you know have it be part of everyday life for a little while. Wonderful. Um, you know, as you bring up, you know, as it did premiere via streaming, uh, and I watched it when it first came out, and then I just watched it again, just to prepare for today. And I was just amazed at as I looked at it and the themes that you explored, the themes of inclusiveness and the differences being important and all of us together, all the varieties of voices creating harmony. Did you have any idea that these messages you were exploring at that time would be so meaningful in the world right now? You know, I think we talked about it, you know, when we were talking about what to make a movie about, you know, Gina and Kendall and I, you know, I think the first thing you start thinking about is what is it is about? And this idea of harmony and diversity, I think, you know, it's, a, it's apropos now, but it always is. You know, I think this idea of inclusion and the celebration of differences since the beginning of time and forever will be something important that we should talk about. Mm -hmm. And it was great to have the vehicle of music to explore that idea because people have, you know, they like what they like and they have, you know, strong feelings about the kind of music that they like. And so it was a great avenue for us, I think, to explore that, that idea and that message. Yeah, and unity is key to our survival, I think. So I, I feel like when we, when we think about universal themes, like that's always a really big one. And like Kendall's saying, how do we tell that in the most unique way? Because it's a story that's been told so many times before. So through the music was the way to do it. Music really is something that unites us, isn't it? From yeah. the dawn of man, it's been music <laughs> and from the simplest instruments like rocks and little drums to now this, I was, I was astonished at the orchestration and the different music between the, the pop music and the, the hard rock and the techno. You explored so many varieties of music it's amazing it is i was thinking to myself as i was listening this movie truly is it's a feast for the eyes and the ears yeah it's like yeah. non-stop yeah we have such an incredible music team also to thank for that like we work with the most talented people we work with justin timberlake and ludwig Göransson, and we brought together you know other talents and um songwriting amazing songwriters like Sarah Ahrens and Max Martin, James Fauntleroy, Anderson Pack, you know, all these cool people who just kind of came together and collaborated. And like, it, it feels like in every aspect of making this film, it was all about unity and collaboration. And, yeah. uh, you know, from the look, from the, the story, everything is, kind of reflects back, the themes of the movie reflect back into the way that we make it. Yeah, and even though it's a, like a celebration of these kind of disparate ideas, whether genres or worlds, you know, Sue, I think you were right in talking about this, the commonality, 
of that we all have music that runs through all of us. But I think a real challenge for Kendall and the team, besides the music, like adding a cohesiveness to the music was adding a cohesiveness to the visual signature of the movie, which, you know, Kendall, we've talked about many times. Like, how do we accomplish that? Bring it all together. Yeah, it's funny because one of the first things I looked at was a, a map of uh, music genealogy mm. and how each of the music musical genres we chose, but how they all relate to every other genre and to each other. So that was really amazing to see all the connections. And then, yeah, to decide, you know, we wanted it to be this amazing crazy musical and visual ride but what was the cohesion well one was definitely fiber because we established that in the first film and that just opened up an incredible you know fiber palette for us to play with for every genre as well and what related to every genre and, and by fiber you mean like the felt and yeah the hair and yeah uh and just fabrics as well. So, um, you know, like for country, we did a whole patchwork quilt kind mm -hmm. of landscape. And for rock, we did a volcano, but it was all covered in denim with zippers and studs and um, plaids and some animal skins and fishnets, you know, for the grids in the windows. And, you know, every single um, musical kind of location had a different aesthetic that was pulled both from kind of the history of the music uh kind of how people dress you know that it, that are related to that music like you know how punk rockers dressed we pulled those ideas in we how techno people dress with all their multicolored beadwork and their black light paintings on their bodies and all that stuff we pulled that into techno so it was really fun to pull yeah. from that trying to be Place. you know and trying to be authentic to the genre not yeah. only in the like have authenticity authenticity in the music you know really getting george clinton to do the funk music and getting ozzy osbourne in there but also also authenticity in the visual style of that genre and on top of it because it's a comedy funny too like right. you know yeah. going to hard rock and using like ripped denim for windows and things like that you know yeah I, I yeah, because our, our characters are little, too, so the scale of the fabric is much bigger mm. in their world. So when Walt was saying the ripped denim, it's like the ripped denim in the knee of a pair of jeans yeah. became a window with our characters, you know, sitting in. And like, you made water and lava and everything, almost everything was out of fiber. Yeah. You know, it, when, you know, like, for instance, when you're shooting a kind of a cheap music video and you use like silks for the fire, you yeah. know, like you use them super effectively yeah. in the volcano, which was so cool. It was super practical in a way. Yeah, it was all red yeah. silk. And, and we say that it's CG, so it's an interpretation, but yeah, it's all based on fiber, yeah. Wow, so this is something we should all watch this. I need to watch the film again and study some of that. I, I was noticing and I love, the, the way you handled water, the, yeah. way, you know, the way it flowed and mm, it had yeah. such an interesting, it felt really viscous yet it had a surface, it was. Yeah, so that was based on, um, you know, that organza fabric that's it's slightly transparent but it has like a prismatic color that runs through it. And then we kind of, we tested it practically with the real fabric and cameras and light and we layered it and sort of waved it, you know, one person on each end, what does the effect look like? And then we tried to replicate that in the computer, but at the same time, wanting it to feel like water. So it still has like glints like water. It still reacts a little bit. So it's a bit of a mix. Mm. Everything kind of was a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, when we came up with this idea altogether on Trolls 1, this visual signature of the movie that we wanted it to feel like it had a handmade quality to it. Mm -hmm. You know, just because in our world where everything's so digital and we use digital too, but we wanted it to feel handmade to make it feel human in a way. Yes, and it yes. more warmth. I think we were just cautious on the first one a little bit where we didn't want it to distract from the storytelling. But then when we realized it didn't, you know, with Kendall and the team, we were able to push it even further, I think, in part two, which was excited everybody. 
I think that helps. It helps separate it a bit from com computer animation yeah. because it has that handmade feeling. And and you're right, something with fiber and fabric, it it connects you on a human level almost. Yeah. It's like you feel it. You don't necessarily know it, but you can feel that it has the sensitivity to it that I love that about it. And yeah. uh, and I, I'm fun. sure there are a lot of challenges creating that in animation. It's not easy. Yeah, like they, they, in fact, even our head of surfacing on the second show built a, a machine out of a salad spinner and all this other stuff and actually took real fabric and put it in and scanned it in this 360 way with the salad spinner mechanism. Wow. So they were, it's crazy. And then they'd use that and apply it in CG, which was, you know. Well, they really embraced, they, yeah. I mean, they embraced every challenge. Like yeah. every day was like a party with them, you know, as we yeah. come, they, had, they would be able to be inventive as they wanted to, you know, there were no limitations in that way. Like I never felt like anybody said, no, we can't do that. Or that's too hard. Or we don't know how. You know? Never. And like the effects department that love it when things explode and fire and water <laughs> and, you know, they love that stuff and they embrace this. <laughs> fabric influenced world in such a way where they were like developing like uh, volcano explosions with pieces of silk and glitter and ribbons of stuff. And they were just all into this kind of aesthetic, you know. Mm, that's so great. Yeah, it was super cool. It feels like, I'm curious to hear how long were you in production on this film? Because all this work, I'm sure there was a ton of R&D and development. So from, you know, I guess we would say initial production design or pre-production through completion. How long was this? Well, luckily we've been on it since the inception, uh, you know, of Trolls 1. So mm -hmm. we had a lot to go on from that. So we were about three years in mm -hmm. production on Trolls World Tour. Um, and uh, you know, it was it. We definitely had experts in every department, and communication was super clear. And we had a really good time. And I think, you know, that also reflects back on the screen. Would you say did you have a lot of creative um, control in that? You know, in some feature films, there are so many layers. Uh, especially in something new or it's super high profile. Sometimes there's a lot of studio involvement and other creative involvement. Did you feel you had, it almost feels like maybe you were able to operate a little tiny bit under the radar because I feel such a strong creative voice in this yeah. and synergy and strength to it. It was, I think we really built up, you know, and we all worked at the studio for a long time. We built up a lot of trust, I think with the studio. So they would really allow us I think a little bit more autonomy than we normally have. And they definitely guide us and have lots of notes that help make the movie. Mm -hmm. But I, we all felt that there was a little bit more freedom maybe than we had in the past because we have proved ourselves, I guess, that we mm -hmm. could do this thing. Yeah, I think the first movie was more complicated in that we, you know, there is a, a trolls came from this little toy, right? <laughs> so, this toy it was you know huge and but it was homogenous as well and we wanted to like create this entire new world and like kind of reinvent this the trolls for a new generation and so there was a lot of um a, there were a, it, there was a very thoughtful all around in every aspect yeah it like that and you know it was hard to navigate at times but you know we kept pushing for the unique especially Kendall um, and uh, we were able to get to a place where we kind of checked all the boxes and we were totally satisfied with it ourselves and elated and excited to dive into the next movie and you know luckily the franchise of trolls has really connected with families mm -hmm. and really connected with kids. And so that also gives us like more opportunity to play and to push. Um, and it, you know, our team, um, you know, is full of 
incredible ideas all the time. And, you know, everybody has a great, incredible point of view that we like to take into consideration going forward. And as far as the studio is concerned, like Walt is saying, we definitely ended up like in a place on, on Trolls World Tour where, you know, there was a lot of studio changeover, you know, naturally with, you know, Universal and everything. And, you know, it, it, it felt like there was a lot of trust and a lot of support, which was just inspiring to us as well. So it was, it was a rather a smooth process. <laughs> well, we really wanted to make a psychedelic movie, you know, uh, Dave Smith, who co-directed the movie with me, it's like, we would look at each other and we'd come up with wild psychedelic ideas because we were really inspired by movies like Yellow Submarine and Pink Floyd's mm -hmm. The Wall and Fantasia and all these things. And we'd come up with very bizarre ideas and strange humor. And we kept looking at each other like, well, is this going to stay in? <laughs> and it just, it, it did. Everyone just kind of embraced this tone of this movie, you know, which yeah. was so much fun. I think there was, yeah, a certain expectation set on the first one about what this, you know, film could be and, and kind of the wacky sense of humor, the edgy, wacky sense of humor mixed with the look. And so I think there was an expectation to push it and elaborate yeah. on that too for the second one. And, um, you know, I've always said that Gina and Walt and um, Mike Mitchell from the first movie as well, they've always, and Dave Smith, you know, whenever I would suggest some crazy idea, they were always all in. Like, <laughs> yes, we are doing that. <laughs> and always, and it was always like a team together. And I think um, the studio responds to that too. When when you have a group of like a people really all in on an idea, it seems to give everybody more trust in an idea that way too. Putting into practice that old improv thing, right? Yes, and, and you know, we're yeah. <laughs> always supporting each other and pushing each other further. Yeah, yeah. Also creating the signature world where we created the rules and they're kind of no rules. <laughs> Which yeah. like gives us the opportunity to really push. So yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I'm curious with, um, with all the different forms of music, the styles of music and the different musical music talents you had involved, was that challenging? It's like you have, you're producing numerous soundtracks almost and you have different creative processes going on and creative themes was that funneled or more organized through a small team like was Justin Timberlake heavily involved in all of that and then or and did did those musicians get involved at the very beginning or did you more have the story developing fairly well before you brought in the musical talent we had a script um, before we brought in the musical talent, but you know, the early, early versions of the script and we, you know, brought in Ludwig Goranson to work with Justin on this and, you know, every step of the way they were involved in, you know, weaving the music organically with us with the movie. It, it wasn't an afterthought in any way. It was all part of the process and, you know, sometimes for the most part, story needs to lead and dictate what the music is. And, you know, it, it, sometimes music ended up leading. So it was it was kind of this kind of process, which was, you know, very um, fluid and sometimes hard to manage. But, you know, <laughs> it, it just seemed the, like the right way to do it. Justin was there very early on. You know, we pitched the movie to him and tell him the concept. And he had ideas too, because it's, we have original songs in the movie, but as you know, it's a little bit of a jukebox musical. So mm -hmm. there are known songs that we kind of uh, reinvented. And he was really integral to the process, you know, and really helping us pick songs. And, you know, it's such a great back and forth. Uh, we talk a lot about like making animated movies, a lot like workshopping a play, because there's a mm -hmm. lot of kind of, putting it up there in a rough way, even rough songs and, and watching it and tearing it all down and putting it back up again. You know, you have that luxury, I think, with animation. That's mm -hmm. really nice. It did, the movie does to me feel very much like a Broadway musical, yeah. you know, theatrical musical. It's a movie, but it's also a musical. I could imagine, 
I find sometimes with certain animated films, maybe it's from childhood, you know, you're <laughs> homesick with the flu, laying in bed, listening to a movie or, you know, having a DV, a videotape on. And yeah. I feel like Trolls is, it, it is that type of film that the music you can almost just listen through the whole movie yeah. just as the soundtrack. It's telling that the story's unfolding and who knows, maybe you will do a, a a traveling show or something yeah. with it it would lend we're, itself very well we're ready i mean that's such a fine i think you know music and animation is such a fine tradition like you said mm -hmm. sue you know it's mm -hmm. such a part of me growing up watching music and animation together it's such a a beautiful blend a good fit so it's nice to keep that tradition alive and push it out in new ways too you know because it's far from a traditional musical but it takes its cues from those you know? right right you, do you eat, I'd, I'd be curious to hear if you, each of you, some of your favorite uh, experience and a favorite or a memorable experience or moment from the movie that during the production that took place or some of your favorite themes. Like a, a moment. I'm, I'm stumping you or, or oh, some so of your nice. favorite or favorite. What's some of your favorite parts of the movie or. I see the movie itself or outside of the movie. Well, either one, either one. <laughs> because Never I always think moments. <laughs> oh, there's, there's so many, but I always think of when uh, when we recorded Ozzy Osbourne, which is really funny. That he came, and he was amazing, by the way. But he came in, and I mean, this is a big, big cast. But this memory sticks to me with Ozzy. He he was convinced that he'd already met Gina and I. I was like, oh, it's great to meet you, Ozzy. And he's like, no, we've met before. Like he was absolutely convinced. <laughs> That we had met in some other <laughs> part of our lives. I love that. I also loved when George Clinton and his wife came in and they mm -hmm. came in because we were showing him the design of his character. And we designed his character um, with, you know, all of his, from photos of him with all of his different color braids and stuff in his hair and the beard, the colored beard. And we put this, we created this gold cape because I love it. A fun. Yeah. And funnily enough, he walked in in a floor length gold, like a raincoat, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was that character and luckily he loved it. Um, and yeah, he was like, oh, we he's... nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we had recorded him because he's a voice in the movie and he's music too. And but you were going to give him an art presentation. He literally walked from the recording studio, which was here on campus at the time, over to this art room to present it. And it was like walking with royalty because he had that giant gold cape on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was really you know, that's part of the fun of making these movies is meeting your heroes like that. You know, George Clinton was a huge hero of mine. I listened to his music growing up. So it's like such an honor and a pleasure and gave the movie such a layer of authenticity. Mm -hmm. We had him and his family um, play the rap party as well. And that was a super highlight. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And that rap party happened like less than a week before quarantine went down. Yeah. So we got it under the wire. Oh, good. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> We're so lucky. That yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did think Ozzy Osbourne was hysterical, and he only has a few lines, but they're all gold. <laughs> yeah, they really are. <laughs> the one where he's raising and he needs help getting into Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I love his wheelchair he's in, and then when it goes in reverse, it goes beep, beep. Yeah. <laughs> I also like when Poppy uh, bedazzles Barb's pet bat. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So funny. Never has glitter been so much fun as in Trolls. Uh, I just think smooth jazz is probably one of my highlights. The <laughs> smooth jazz scene where uh, Jamie Dornan puts everyone in a trance um, and they go into this smooth jazz fantasy. Uh, and that I think was one of the most weird, funny parts of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, that was really an example of how far can we push this? You know, even yeah. our co-director, Dave Smith, his legs appear in that fantasy. <laughs> we a had really to, cheesy we, green screen. Yeah, we had to really push uh, Kendall and the team because Dave and I yeah. think, like, can this look like a really bad public cable public access show? Like, how bad can this look is how we pushed it. There's a lot of that on this. Yeah. Hard to get the how bad can we make it look? How bad can we make those effects look? And you guys couldn't. You just could more. not do it. You, they were so. Oh, it's so done. hard. 
learn because you want to just refine, refine. We're in that age of refinement. And yeah, you guys are like, no, it's perfect. Leave it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was funny that you'd bring in um, a live action person, yeah. you know, or, or the tiger, the white tiger, you know, and you, some of that co tiger. composited stuff together. And <laughs> that was really realized in the boards that yeah. whole scene. Really yeah, well. so so yeah. much. I mean, we had great writers yeah. on the movie, of course, but so much of the invention and the humor and ideas come out of the storyboard processing, you know, which we yeah. do in the traditional sense, you know, back mm -hmm. from the Disney days where it's like you get an idea and you just draw it, you know, it's like not all of it is scripted. So I think, you know, keeping that tradition alive really adds to the kind of absurd, wild, unexpected humor of the movie. Mm -hmm. You must have had a fairly large board team because... I was noticing through the songs, through all the action, the camera is moving a lot and the scenes are very specific. You don't have characters standing around. They're not talking heads. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the scenes, the, the angles are very, the boarding is really interesting in the film. Yeah, it's super kinetic. You know, that was the idea. And, and each kind of world had its own signature. We worked a lot with our head of layout, who's our cinematographer, Todd Jensen. And he really worked on the look of that, you know, and how the, the camera in each of the worlds, you know, was inspired by that genre itself, you know, like kind of shooting the country music thing like a Western, shooting pop yeah. village like a pop music video, you know, or that concert movie for the hard rock area, you know, with handheld concert footage. So, you know, there's so much intent going into the movie that sometimes maybe the audience doesn't even realize it, you know, it's underneath their register, like you said earlier, <laughs> that you just feel it hopefully yeah like even the lighting on all those genres we really like researched you know so many acdc concerts <laughs> 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 how do those lighters do it and yeah. they're very in hard rock they're very much they like to be there programming as the concert's going whereas for techno it's a lot of it is pre-recorded pre-done and played but so it was really fun to like lock into those ideas too and try to get that into the movie the look of the movie as well how did you choose those various musical genres did it just over time you had a lot of names that are a little a lot of ideas you brought together and just figured them out or did you have specific we had a gina White, we had a, a musicologist on the movie as a <sighs> consultant who really helped us you know we wanted these uh, uh like main genres. What was there like six main genres? Is that right? Yeah. And we those were the main genres were ones that we found that were represented all over the world. You know, there are so many genres of music, so many subgenres, but these are kind of the core that could also be represented internationally as well. A lot of thought, a lot of thought went into this. Oh you, yeah, a lot. <laughs> I mean, I absolutely loved, well, I loved all of it, but the um the the classical music you know because you're in you're in the rock and the pop and all this action and then you go into the classical world where they have their what i you know the kind of cartoony or metaphorical uh wolf get you know mozart, mozart hair, hair and hair. wigs and okay. it, it had to be that they're trolls but it's all about hair so yeah, yeah. You had to do and, it and then that's the, actually it, one of my favorite scenes is that whole it's beautiful and then it went very pastel so then it got very soft mm -hmm. and cloud-like i it was great the way you juxtaposed the different, you know, bright and colorful to them that and the little penny whistle. The yeah. little, uh, <laughs> and even the troll chart, the head of the uh, classical music, which we call Symphonyville, he's played by Gustavo Dudamel, the conductor oh, yes. from Los Angeles Philharmonic. So even, that level of authenticity, <laughs> you know, like we had to have a real conductor play that guy. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Do you, do you have, um, you know, again, if I go back to just watching the film, I wrote down a few of the quotes that I just thought were so great. I mean, there's a, about 500 in there, but <laughs> some of those little comments like music has done nothing but divide us. A world where everyone looks the same, sounds the same and thinks the same isn't harmony. Real harmony takes lots of different voices yeah. and denying our differences is denying the truth of who we are. And, and then near the end when, um, you know, be brave enough to believe things can change. It's so, uh, I don't know, it's very inspiring what you've put to, into this film and the story. Thank you for recognizing yeah. that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think that's what a lot of people were. It's nice to hear when people are picking up on that, you know, because uh-huh. our, our first and foremost goal is have a good time. And like we talk about how crazy some of the jokes are, and you're laughing through the whole thing, or like Gina says, people are dancing at home that they're watching it at home. But ultimately, that there is that it is about something, you know, that it's this mm-hmm. message, this positive message that resonates and hopefully with a lot of young people too, because they're the ones who are going to grow up and they're going to carry these ideas with them and make real change in our communities. You know? Yeah, I feel like it's a responsibility working on a film for three to four years that it has deep, meaningful connection to, you know, who we are at their, our core. And, you know, also for us to do our job and to really care all the way through the process to put the best, you know, art out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you live you're giving part of your life to this, aren't you? I mean, you're living, <laughs> breathing, eating this for years on end. You want to feel that you're, it's like you're putting your own, you know, soul or whatever passion <laughs> yeah. into yeah. what you've created. Yeah. Yep, yeah. we're going to cry now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Six years. I mean, you know, six years for both movies. That's a long right. time to kind of really commit yeah. to it. So, you know, hopefully, yeah, that it does, besides being fun, that it is about something important. Yeah. Too. That's, That's very fun. nice. I am um, Gina. Here's a, something I was thinking for you that um, uh, you know the fact that this was the first major release that was streamed, um, and do you think you, you guys really launched this whole you know the proving that this can be successful? Do you think this is going to have a lasting effect on the studio business model? You know, we we used to think it's all going to the box office; it has to go into the theaters. But do you think we're going to see more and more movies? specifically for streaming or can we capture a bigger audience that way ultimately um i think that you know people will want both you know they'll want to watch the movie at a a film at home and they'll want to watch them a film in the movie theater and you know sometimes it's hard to gather up your family and get them out to the movie theater even you know obviously we can't do that right now but you know, I do think that when this is over, people are going to go back to the movies and it will be wonderful and, and life will be back to normal. But you know, when I had little, when my kids were small, it was really hard to always be getting out to the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, but also like people really like that collective experience in the theater and laughing together and the comments that kids make at the screen it's like that's that's part of our lives Mm -hmm. and um you know i think that there's room for both Mm -hmm. how about you we definitely designed it for a big screen Mm -hmm. yeah but but, you know we we yeah we wanted that you know concert experience you know we mixed it the way we shot it but we are very well aware of a movie mostly lives at home you know it has this kind of brief moment where it's out in the theaters and you know we wanted people to have that experience but even an editorial we have this tiny screen you know so i'm watching uh, it like oh, most people are going to be watching it on their phone is it working you know is the composition is the movie working that way so i just feel like they're they're just two different experiences and i think people will always want like gina said the community of the theater Mm-hmm. But really, because I have young kids at home, I like having the experience at home and dancing and singing and making your own popcorn. So mm-hmm. they're both they're both valid experience. I think people will, will continue to value them both. Any chance that they will do a theatrical release for Trolls? I would love to see it on the I big screen. That. With the music and all the surround sound, oh and yeah. we, we did. We we designed, we mixed the movie like you were at a concert. Yeah, but this like it felt like you were inside the thing. But you know what? A lot of people's home uh, theaters theater systems yeah. sound like that too. Yeah. But I always imagine this movie because it was inspired by so many kind of midnight movies that it could play at midnight for the sleep deprived college students, you know, in a theater <laughs> somewhere, you know. Like at the old New Art. Remember how they used to play Midnight yeah. Movies? Now at the New Art? Like this one is a trippy movie, man. It's a trip. Yeah. It, it could get embraced that way. <laughs> totally. we're, times are getting more and more trippy out there. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I've heard a little, uh, I don't know if any of this is true, but there is scuttlebutt in the uh, industry going around that there may be another Trolls adventure coming in the future. Any I know you probably can't say a word, but 
Any thoughts? Do you think it would be great? The all, yeah. thing about trolls is that there are so many, many, many more stories to tell. So, you know. It feeds we, itself. Feed, feed, yeah. feed. Yeah. The world is <laughs> infinite. You know, I feel like on the first one, we like we barely scratch the surface, you know, and this last one, it was kind of the world of different trolls. Like, I feel like the world and this universe that everyone has worked on, and all these hundreds of amazing people, there's so much more we could do. There's so much more music, you know, mm -hmm. so many more characters and worlds to go to. We, I would never get tired of it. You know, I really enjoy this world a lot. It's a nice, fuzzy immersion. It's a beautiful world full of music and heart and honesty, <laughs> you know. We're ready to make more. We're, we're just, we're ready. We <laughs> It's a good time making a Trolls movie. Yeah. Always. Nice. Feels like home. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Nice, nice. Um, you know, I was thinking our, our, our CIFA Hollywood audience would probably love to hear a bit about how you got into the industry and, you know, how you started your first jobs and some of your experiences. Yeah, well, I'll go first because, Sue, you and I have a special connection. I don't know if the CIFA audience knows this, but my uh, career in animation started with your company, Creative Capers. I got, that was my first day, like coming out of college, out of Cal <laughs> Arts. Like you guys picked me, you know, and I was uh, so grateful. Like I have a job <laughs> and you guys picked me to come help you make all those incredible things you guys were making. You know, we were designing video games and coming up with TV shows and uh, yeah. everything at, at your company. So that's that's where I got my start, thanks to you and you taking a chance because I was a bit of a weirdo. You know, I had a weird style, weird sensibility. And uh, thanks to I, you, your belief in me, now now I'm here. <laughs> oh, well, if you don't mind, I'll share a little uh, a little bit of a little information. When Walt was at, uh, he was at uh, CalArts and Becky Bristow, who was the head of the animation program there, it was coming up time for the uh, the senior show when they, you know, the studios would go to see who the talent, you know, who the new graduates are, the students there. And Becky called me and she said, Sue, you've got to see this guy, Walt Dorn's work. He goes, she said, he's really out there and he's pretty weird. And I don't think anyone else will hire him. He has, she said he's the Tim Burton. Yeah. She said he's the Tim Burton of Cal Arts. Yeah. And we went out and we saw his work and we he had this great student film and we fell in love with him and instantly offered him a job. And then he came to Creative Capers and together we developed a TV show called Nightmare Ned and a whole bunch of things. But yeah, you know, so we also have to thank Becky. She was the one who connected true. us, but. That's true, but I really thank you and, and Terry and David, you know, for really giving me that chance. And now look, now the world has caught up to me and the world is weird. And I'm yeah. Weird. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so Kendall, how about you? Yeah, I think I was probably a bit of a weirdo too. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, so I graduated from Art Center, but as an editorial illustrator back in the day. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And so I, I did that for uh, a couple of years until I moved back to San Francisco. And when I did, um, an old Art Center teacher of mine, Barry Jackson, who also works in animation, he... Uh, he said, they're making a film in San Francisco and you really, you got to work on it. Like your work is just like this film. And it ended up being Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, mm -hmm. and, and they made it in, you know, South San Francisco. And uh, so that was my first in and I got totally hooked. So I started as a production illustrator and I quickly became um, an assistant art director. In fact, there were only three of us, I think, and the four of us in the art department. We all either were art directors or assistant art directors. <laughs> um, but I got hooked. It was so cool because I could draw and paint, you know, like I always did. But I was building models. I was working on puppets in the spray booth. I was on set painting scenic and wow. um, working with lighters and setting up lights and it really just touched every creative bone in my body really um and so i've never looked back i went from there <laughs> fantastic yeah. how about you gina how about you gina um well i always have been fascinated with puppets and the muppets uh, i ended up going to pratt institute uh not for very long though because i decided to go work in animation for ralph bakshi on cool world 
And um, that's the story. Yeah. <laughs> I got hooked. I got hooked. Like, oh, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Total animation does that. Weirdo. Animation animation hooks you. You know, I've I've talked yeah. to people that didn't even have their intent to get into animation, but once they do it, it's so much fun and the community that makes it and just yeah. the level of play and creativity I think really hooks people in. Yeah, it's like I found my people. Yeah. 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 You know, family. it's so interesting you say that. We we say that here uh, in my studio. We, we talk about artists. You know, we're all kind of out there people. And I say, we have to find our tribe. Like you've got your <laughs> troll tribes. It's like we find our tribe, other artists and an animation especially. And then we're at home. Because I don't know about you, but we'd go home to where we live. And people always looked at us like, what are you doing? Why? You know, you <laughs> yeah. don't, you're different, but we have kind of a tribe, all of us together. And yeah. it yeah. kind of, it unifies us much like, you know, we, like we have our voice and it brings us together, but we all have different voices, right? Yeah. Just like the yeah. tribe. Yeah, totally. Well, I cannot thank you enough um, for participating in this today and telling us about Trolls World Tour and your experiences making it. If there's any final things you'd like to say, please, I'd like to give you that opportunity if you have any final comments and- I just wanna say, say thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, awesome. it's so great to see you again, Sue. Oh. And great to do this, you know, it's such a pleasure. Well, we, see yeah. Hollywood really appreciates this and <laughs> We're very excited for everyone to see the film and I just so enjoyed watching it again. And it's a beautiful piece of filmmaking. You know, I don't want anybody to think this is just a kid's movie. This is a movie for everybody. Yeah. And I'm glad you were able to share with us just the level of detail that went into it and then the thought and the creative work that you put into this. This was not a quick, easy thing movie to make. The depth of, <laughs> of work, it, it's just astonishing. And it's a real, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Rock on. Yeah. <laughs> right, rock Very on. Good. That's pretty good. <laughs> we'll all be watching for what's next in the world of trolls. Yay. Yay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, thank you, Walt. Thanks, Kendall. And thank Gina. Thank you, yeah. Gina. We appreciate Bye -bye. it. Bye. 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 And then I think...